Hello everyone and welcome to Clickheads, I'm Eddie and today we're going to be talking about EA, their bottomless pit of terrible ideas, and how corporate culture can get gaming culture so wrong. So let's start at breakneck speed. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order recently released its sales figures. Up to this point the game has sold roughly 8 million units, which even according to EA sold beyond our expectations for the quarter and later reiterated the result by saying it hit the high end of its expected sales. Those projections were around 6 to 8 million total, but they now think the game will reach 10 million units sold. Most of that information comes from CFO and COO Blake Jorgensen in recent interviews, and I want you to keep this guy's name in your mind because we'll be hearing from him again and again. So what is the story here? EA had a surprise hit, or should I say, Respawn made a much better game than anyone expected and word got around that it was worth checking out. Yeah, that's part of the story, but another far funnier and memeable part of the story is that this game succeeded in an area that EA doesn't believe in anymore. Single player, linear narrative driven experiences. To really see how much EA misses the mark, we need to go back in time a little bit. Back in 2017, there was another developer at the helm of a Star Wars Universe game for EA, and that developer was Visceral Games, the company that made Dead Space. At the time, EA decided to shut down the studio and the Star Wars project because it continued to look like a much more linear game which people don't like as much today as they did 5 years ago or 10 years ago. Guess who that quote comes from? That's right, it's your boy Blake. So how can both of these things be true? How can a linear story based game exceed EA's internal expectations and sell in the millions despite people apparently not liking those kind of games anymore? Well this is where we get to EA and their terrible ideas and takes. It is of course nonsense that gamers don't like single player games anymore, they just don't like shit ones or games that are exploitative. You know, games that try and wedge in microtransactions where they don't belong. When a game comes out that developers have really cared about, that is well executed, has a great premise and is value for money, gamers are drawn to it like I am to Nando's, that is to say with ravenous want and abandon. Don't judge me, I like chicken. And there's a very good reason for that. Single player games are hard to cram full of bullshit. Lord knows people have tried, Shadow of Mordor I'm looking at you here, but generally players are not thrilled to partake in the worst sins of modern gaming in their single player games. What they want out of single player experiences is actually to escape from all that noise. This is why I chuckle to myself with disbelief every time a good game exceeds expectations. Horizon Zero Dawn apparently came out of nowhere, but ask yourself did it really or was it just a good game that picked up real gamer credit naturally? There are in fact too many massive single player games in recent memory to mention. Actually screw that, let's have a think off the top of my very shiny bald head. God of War, Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil 2 Remake, Jedi Fallen Order, Horizon Zero Dawn. I could go on but I think you get the point. The best way to see how asinine some of EA's ideas are are just to take a quick look at games that aren't even out yet. Final Fantasy 7, Resident Evil 3 Remake, Last of Us 2 for God's sake, as if Naughty Dog are worried that their game won't sell because it's too linear. Come on Blake, wake up. Perhaps I'm giving EA too much credit. I assume that they come to these takes via market research and other dark arts, but maybe there's a clue in what he said about cancelling Visceral's Star Wars game way back when. It was an economic decision at the end of the day. Maybe they know that players still want these kinds of games, but because they can't put gambling for kids slot machines in them, unlike FIFA and 2K, they just can't make enough money from them by comparison. Sorry, I have just been contacted by my lawyers and they instruct me to make a correction. FIFA and 2K don't contain gambling, they're making use of surprise mechanics. Now that that's all cleared up, back to the roasting. Imagine the balls you'd have to have to say that you know what gamers want while also making Battlefront 2, Battlefield 1 and numerous other games that over time have proven to be the exact opposite of what fans actually wanted from those games, at least at release. I'll tell you one thing, EA are so lucky to have Respawn Entertainment making games for them, so so lucky. Apex and Fallen Order are both success stories that EA, despite their acclaimed omnipotence, didn't really see coming which tells me something. How's about EA, you just get out of the way of your devs. Stop pretending you know everything and just trust the devs to make great games for you and collect the checks. 
Please, we're all begging you. But it doesn't stop here. Let's talk about the Nintendo Switch. The Switch, it won't surprise you to know, is quite popular. And by quite popular, I mean it has just passed the Xbox One in sales numbers, despite launching three years later. This is why you see ports to the Switch of games like Witcher 3, Doom 2016, Overwatch, and more. It's a big market. But guess who's not completely on board yet? That's right, EA. Our boy Blake is back, Guess what he said about the Switch very recently? We are always looking and discussing with Nintendo what else we can put on the platform, and as the platform grows, our interest in adding content grows for that platform. This bit just kills me, but we're also conscious of the fact that the top selling titles by a long shot are all Nintendo software, which is fabulous software, but it helps us balance the realities of how big our markets could be there. So let me get this straight. You're waiting for the Switch market to be bigger, despite it selling out virtually everywhere, and you're a bit cautious because you're unlikely to outsell Mario. Okay. To be fair to Blake and EA, the reason they don't believe in the Switch is because they think a lot of Switch owners also own one of the other big consoles, which might be very true. There's just one tiny detail here though that I think Blake is missing. The Switch is a handheld, you moron! It's not even the same market! Of course people will buy different versions of the same game if you can take one of them with you on a fucking flight! Why do you think Square has ported the original Final Fantasy VII for the billionth time? Because playing at home and on the go are not even comparable! You know why players keep bugging Respawn developers about a Switch version of Apex? Because they want to play your game everywhere, but as usual, you keep getting in the way, like a pensioner at the bloody supermarket, honestly! This stuff makes me way more mad than it should. Alright, calm down Eddie, breathe. If EA wants to leave money on the table, fine. If they want to miss the actual lessons from single player game successes, fine. Just don't insult everyone's intelligence and say all your terrible takes are what's real and that everything else is a surprise to you. Do you know what I'm surprised by, EA? The fact that you are most definitely part of the gaming axis of evil alongside Bethesda and Activision Blizzard, but occasionally, once in a while, you publish a game that isn't some predatory money-grabbing shell and is actually good. That's a shock. Perhaps having less to do with the whole game-making process is better. At least try it for like five years, see how it goes. Anyway, I'm sorry I got so heated. That's about it for today. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the content on this channel, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you get notified when we upload. Until next time.